Hello out there to you. In this video, we're going to calculate uh, some things having to do with an excise tax. So the problem is we've got a supply uh, curve of cigarettes, uh, Q equals 2P, and the demand for cigarettes, Q is 12 minus P. The government decides to impose a $6 per pack tax on consumers. Okay. So first, just so we can compare, because we're trying to figure out how much is the price increased. So basically, what is the new price that consumers will pay? What will the price that the sellers will get to keep? How much tax revenue will the government get to raise? And who has a larger share of the tax incidence or, or burden? Um, for tax revenue, this is the $6 tax times whatever we find in the quantity. Okay, that'll be the tax revenue. We'll call that TR for tax revenue. In this case, okay, so first, just by way of comparing, you know, what was the old price for consumers? We want to set both of these equal to each other to get the equilibrium uh, quantity here. So uh, in the, what I'm going to call the old days, before tax, pre-tax, um, we're just going to set them both equal to each other. So 2P equals 12 minus P, and this gives us 3P equals 12 and then p equals 4. You can plug that into either equation. It's a little easier to plug it in here. So that would be uh, q equals uh, 4 times uh, 2. So that would be 8. So in the old days, price was 4 and they'd buy 8 packs of cigarettes in this market. Uh, now we want to tax the consumers. So what we're going to do is we need to decrease what the maximum the consumers are willing to pay. Sometimes that's called a choke price or a reservation price. So what we want to do is we want to take this demand curve for demand function and make it an inverse demand function so that instead of Q equals 12, let's, let's type that instead. Um, so instead of being Q equals 12 minus P, uh, we want it to be P equals 12 minus Q. That's an inverse demand function. So what this means is that the way you can think about this is if um, the consumer buys no packs of cigarettes, the most they're willing to pay is 12. 12 is like the limit. Um, once the price goes to 13, or um, then they're not willing to pay uh, any more uh, than that. And you could put it in like, you could say like, well, if they bought one pack of cigarettes, um, what would be the most they'd be willing to pay for one pack of cigarettes? You just put in a one there, and that would be 11, okay? So now the price that the sellers get to keep, I'm going to call that PS, is going to be 12 less than the tax. So it would actually be six. So what you're going to do is you're going to take away whatever the tax amount is from that reservation price. So it would be uh, 12 minus six, which is six. So now they're only willing to pay six to the seller and they'll pay six to the government minus Q. Okay. So now we want to set that equal to uh, Q equals two P because that's the, um, the, what do you call it? The, the supply curve. <laughs> that's a guy lost there. Um, and then it's a little easier if I set both um, uh, it, so that they're P equals Q. That way, um, I'm consistent on both sides. So the inverse supply function would then be P equals um, one half Q. Okay, so that's the inverse supply function. So set both of those guys equal to each other, and we get six minus Q equals one half Q. And so that would be 6 equals 1.5Q, and then Q is 4. So there's four units uh, consumed, okay? And then um, that actually tells us part of this answer. That would be 6 times 4. So the total tax revenue uh, would be $24. Okay. Next. Um, and now I'm going to use this for quantity to uh, figure out what the price that the sellers get to keep. So we'll just plug that in there. And so PS will be 
two. Sellers get to keep two. Now we can do a couple of things. You can you could take four and plug it back into our uh, original demand function. That's going to be PB, the price that the buyers have to pay. Or we could just say to ourselves, okay, we, we know that the price the sellers get to keep is two. The tax has to be six more than that. So PB has to be eight. Okay, so either way. Um, so the price went from, so PB in the old pre-tax days was four and it rose up to eight. So the tax went up or the tax raised the price by four dollars so it's kind of an important thing to think about um, not the entire six dollars is imposed on consumers um, two dollars is, is imposed on the sellers which is the difference between the price that the sellers get to keep and the um, old equilibrium price which was four so the way we can think about that is sellers I mean they pay two dollars per pack now of the tax and then the buyers pay four dollars per pack of the tax okay and so this tax is a bigger burden for the buyers so they have a larger share of the tax incidence so that's how to figure that all out algebraically and if you have time or you have the resources uh, available to you you could just graph all of this um, and then it's just a shift downward on the demand curve so if you shifted it if you had some kind of function like this not drawn to scale and then you took demand you would just shift that down by six dollars I feel like I should say this, this this particular question, we're taxing the consumers, but in a different world, if they put a tax of $6 on the producers, you would just add that to the supply curve, which has a way of like increasing the supply curve to, to look more like that, or really it's a decrease, but it's a leftward shift in the supply curve. Um, it would have the same result. So your answer here and your answer here um, wouldn't and the answer here wouldn't change if the tax was placed on the the sellers instead of the buyers it's just how how did you get there